In this recording, what we're going to look at how to do is how to use ActionScript version 3 to control movie clips, but also movie clips within movie clips. Now I've set up a very simple scene here. I have a little UFO, and under the contents, you can see that this is my movie clip. I have it specified as UFO control. Inside of UFO control, I have a series of simple animations that we will go and process. Now I have gone ahead and marked which frames those are so I can immediately go to them or I could if I want to label those frames and do the animation that way. I also have as part of my background I have a little kind of control panel looking thing my background but within my background I have a dashboard and as part of the dashboard that is actually a movie clip within the background movie clip I have a dashboard movie clip that has some animation that will change the kind of bar heights the other thing to keep in mind when you're going through this process is to notice what the instance names are of your different movie clips that way you can use ActionScript to be able to control the individual timelines of those movie clips. I have three buttons here set up and I'm going to assign a event handler to each of those buttons and I need to add the event listeners to listen for those click events. So I'm going to set up the first one. Good little trick is if you see that it's blue that means that you typed it correctly. Then I have a mouse event I'm listening for the click. Now click is all capitalized. Then I have to specify a function which is going to be called when someone clicks on that button. Uh, it's going to be called my fire handler. I'm going to repeat these for each of my different buttons. Now that I have those created I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write my functions. I have my function names already specified. In fact, I can actually go in and copy and paste those. Using look ahead makes it a little bit faster. It's of type void and I have my curly braces. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to go to my UFO control object. and This is the instance name that I gave for my UFO and I want to go to and play. Now I can go and use my little check mark to check my syntax. I have no errors, that's good. If I try to test this right now, you're going to see I get a couple of errors. My screen is actually kind of flickering and wigging out. This is because I have a couple of errors so my preloader script is not being handled correctly. You might say, well boy, didn't you just check the syntax? Yes. This is a compiler error which is a little bit different than the syntax error. The syntax in my frame is correct. The compile error is saying that I can't find these two handler names, take handler and cloak handler. That's because we haven't written them yet, but we did reference them here. So we'll need to go ahead and create those handlers real quick as well. Now through some magic of copy and paste, I have my three functions real quick. I can go ahead and test this. Now I don't have any uh, compilation errors, nor do I have any uh, syntax errors. I can click on my fire button. It works as you would expect. I can use the steal cow button because all UFOs need to be able to steal a cow. And of course I have my generic cloak. But this is a nice simple example of what I was trying to show. However, you'll notice two things. First off, my screen is a little bit smaller. That's because my stage I have blown up to 200%. So if you're wondering about that, the second thing you might notice is I'm not controlling this dashboard here. So let's go ahead and add one extra dashboard. Now I'm just going to do it first for the fire handler, but I'm going to show you a kind of common uh, mistake that people have. Now my dashboard is actually called my graph. Go to and stop and give it the correct frame number and if I go to try to compile and run this I'm going to get an error and it says I don't understand basically because it can't find graph so it's just giving me kind of a generic axis of undefined property 
We go back to my actions frame. You see this graph listed here. However, graph is inside of another movie clip. That movie clip has to have an instance name so I can reference it. And notice I have a period. So I have a period that separates between each of my movie clips. So I can nest five or six movie clips down. You generally don't want to, but you can if you need to. Now, if I test, if I click on the fire handler, you can notice my dashboard has now changed. Go back to my frames. And now I'm going to select this. I'm just going to copy and paste it into the others and change the frame numbers, which I have written down elsewhere. Now when I go ahead and try this out, I can say fire, steel, cloak, and it all goes back depending upon what it is I'm trying to do. Okay, so just a real quick way of how you access movie clips with ActionScript. You reference them by the instance name, and if it's a movie clip within a movie clip, you reference the container movie clips instance name, dot, and then the inner movie clips name, and then you can access its properties very easily.